Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. A long time ago, I read a book by Debbie Ford, and it was all about our shadow work. And I can't remember the exact title as I sit here and I'm sharing this with you, but I'll put a link to it in the show notes below. And it was quite amazing because it was about bringing the parts of ourselves that we don't really want anyone to see to light. And what I want to share with you today is about owning those parts of us. Because if we don't own those parts of us, then they tend to own us. And I actually wrote something that I want to share with you. Our traits are neither good nor bad, except when they have control of us. And, and that's what it's really about. If we don't own those traits, those parts of us that we're ashamed of, feel guilty about, are embarrassed about, then they have the power to run us when we're at our most vulnerable. When we own those parts of us, then we can see the gift in them and we can use them appropriately. And it's funny because I did this work with, you know, reading Debbie Ford's book and um, I did it on myself, but I've also seen it very clearly in my children. And I think it, it's always easier to see things in other people because there's a slight distance, a space. And obviously it's less uncomfortable when we're looking at somebody else's stuff rather than our own. But I'm going to share some of these things with you that I have inside of me and share how I've transformed them into something positive so that hopefully it can help you to do the same for yourself. So actually last week, and I'll put a link to this as well, so last week I shared about being inconsistent so that is something that I know, or I always felt was a real fault of mine. And in fact, somebody I went out with years ago berated me about it and said that I needed to be more consistent in my life. And I don't think it's about making those parts of you wrong, but it's about knowing the gift that they have for you. So my inconsistency means that my life is exciting. It's vibrant. I'm endlessly curious and eager to learn. And because it's inconsistent, I'm always getting myself into situations which bring new things into my life and make it rich and full. But I also know that if I am not aware of it, then my inconsistency can bring extreme highs and extreme lows because I can allow it to run me or take over. But because I'm aware of it, this very rarely happens nowadays and my life is much more balanced. I am still an inconsistent person at heart, but I use it to enrich my life rather than take it, take, allow it to take over my life. Now, if you speak to my family, they will attest to this. I am incredibly stubborn. And this is actually something one of my sons has in common as well. And it's something that we've blocked, locked heads with a number of times. For me, my stubbornness is a way to defend the truth of who I am from very opinionated and well-meaning, definitely well-meaning, but I have a very strong family with very strong opinions and very strong personalities. And my stubbornness was a way to protect myself and to ensure that my path, I, I stuck to my own path. It gave me the courage and determination to forge ahead with what I wanted. But if I allow my stubbornness, if I'm not aware of it, when I get triggered, I can be stubborn for the wrong reasons and I can stick to wrong opinions or wrong paths just out of stubbornness. So for me, being stubborn is, is a wonderful asset. As long as I'm aware of it and I use it in alignment with myself, as long as I use it when I am speaking from my truth and I'm doing what's right for me, it doesn't work for me when I let it run me and when it actually takes me away from the truth of who I am and what I want to do just out of being stubborn. Now, the last one I'm going to share with you is that I am a people pleaser. <laughs> I hold my hand up and I own it. And this has caused me a lot of pain in life because I've taken on the responsibility of other people's happiness from times to time. And if anyone is anywhere along the personal development pathway, you will realise that trying to please somebody else is a thankless task. You cannot take on the responsibility for somebody else's happiness because A, it makes them a victim and it makes them powerless, and B, you then get blamed for every time that they're not happy. But being a people pleaser also means that I have a huge gift to make people happy. 
And if I do it and use it in the right way, it's a wonderful thing that I can sprinkle on people's lives. But I do have to remember that I can't take responsibility for their happiness. So it's understanding. And I mean, this is by no means the full list <laughs> of all the things that I will see, see as faults in myself. It's quite extensive. But I just wanted to share a few of them with you. And if you're not sure what your faults are, I can tell you how to find out. First of all, it's the things that trigger you when someone else accuses you of it. So if somebody else accused me of being impulsive or being um, inconsistent and I felt defensive about it, that's a truth about yourself that you're trying not to acknowledge and own. There was another one actually that my ex used to often call, call me and I know that it was a massive trigger for me years ago and that was pathetic. And it was something that I was incredibly ashamed of, as I tried incredibly hard to be a, big, a strong woman. And it was a fear I had. But again, acknowledging it and learning about it meant that when I had a relationship with someone else years later and they tried to call me pathetic, I just found it funny. Because it was no longer something I was ashamed of. It was something I owned. And there's a power in owning it. There's um, a strength and a, a wholeness and a unity in owning those parts of you. And they no longer have power over you when you own them. You can use them when you want to use them and you don't have to use them when you don't want to use them. So it's about you owning those parts of you rather than them owning you. And when you own them, you become whole. You become more complete and more grounded and more present. When you're fractured, your energy is everywhere and you only get like that when you're not owning every part of you. I hope this has made some sense to you and I'll put lots of links to what I've spoken about in the show notes below. If you want to access any of my resources, you'll find them on my website, again, in the show notes below. Um, I've got lots of free courses as well as paid courses where you can dive deeply down into what I've been sharing with you. I also do coaching to help people find alignment, to find flow and to live more fully in their lives. And if it's something that you think would interest you, just send me an email through my website and we can arrange a free chemistry call where I'd be happy to discuss it with you. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.